Okay, in this video I'm going to go over something called the trigonometric ratios um, for right triangles. Now, trigonometric ratios really are just the relationship that exists between the angles of a triangle, and specifically a right triangle, okay, and then the lengths of the sides of the triangles. And what the ancient Greeks discovered was that the relationship between the size of the angle and the length of the side are fixed ratios, okay, no matter what size your right triangle is. Now, there's a lot more to trigonometric ratios than just right triangles. There's something called the unit circle and all that sort of thing, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk how it specifically relates to right triangles, okay? And you can see what those relationships are called. They actually have names. Now, up here I have these abbreviations, uh, S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N. And these are the abbreviations, but this is the real uh, words from which they're abbreviated from. So they're, it's actually pronounced sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? And probably the best way to explain this is just to kind of get right into it immediately, but um, l before I do that, I need to do two more things. I need to label this uh, triangle, and I want to show you what this word sokatoa means, okay? So here I know I have a right triangle, right? And I've labeled the 90 degree angle, uh, C, capital C, uh, one of the short legs or long leg, it doesn't really make any difference. I've labeled that angle A and then this angle B. Now directly opposite from A is the length, and I'm going to abbreviate that small a. Uh, directly opposite from B, I'm going to label that small b, and then directly opposite from the 90 degree angle, I'm going to call the hypotenuse, remember that's always called the hypotenuse, c. And remember, that's how you get the Pythagorean theorem, that a squared plus b squared will be equal to c squared, right? Now, but here's, here's the problem. What if I didn't have this length? Or what if I was missing this length or missing two of these lengths? What if I, but it, I knew, for example, let's say one of the uh, degrees, let's say I knew that this, for example, this angle A, let's say I knew that it was actually, I don't know, let's come up with 30 degrees, okay? Okay, which would mean that this angle over here would have to be 60, but that's, I'm just going to leave that alone for right now. Now, this is how the trigonometric functions or ratios work. The sine of any angle, so let's use the sine of 30 degrees, and I'm going to say sine 30, or actually, I'm not even going to say 30, I'm going to say for any angle, and this is the abbreviation that they use for angle, okay, it's called theta. Let's say a Greek letter, let me just put that up there so you can see what it means, theta. Okay, that again is the abbreviation that almost everyone uses for angles. So the sine of any angle is always equal to the opposite length, which in this case is A, so let me just put that down here, the opposite length over H, the hypotenuse. Now think what that means, that the ratio between this side and the hypotenuse is always a fixed number for 30 degrees, okay? Now cosine, and this is where you can start seeing where Sokatoa actually comes in, is equal to the adjacent side, right? And what does adjacent mean? Remember that adjacent means next to. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent, I'm just running out of room here a little bit, is always equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Over the adjacent. And this little mnemonic here, this little word, so katoa, helps you remember what that is. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 
cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. <coughs> now, again, let's just go ahead and try one of these problems. Let's see if we can figure out what the length of uh, any of these are. And I'm going to say I know that angle A is 30 degrees, and I'm going to say that I know that the hypotenuse is, let's say, 12. Okay, 12 inches or whatever that might be. But I know nothing else. Okay, and I want to figure out what A and B are, and I want to figure out what angle B is. So, here we go. So, I'm going to say that the sine, here's an example problem. I'm going to say the sine of 30 degrees should be equal to the opposite, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. Okay, now you're probably saying to yourself, well, what does sine 30 mean? I, I mean, I, I know what 12 is, but I don't know what A is. And this is where you can go to any calculator, and we used to have to do it in, in books, but if you go to a calculator, you'll see that you have these three functions, or these three ratios right here, right? So if I hit sine, and then 30, I get 0.5. Okay, so what I can do is I can replace the sine of 30 with 0.5 because that is a specific ratio that's constant for any sine of 30 degrees in any triangle that I have. So I can say 0.5 is equal to A over 12, right? Move that over there, multiply both sides by 12, and I get 6 is equal to. A. So now I can start filling my numbers in. I know that A is equal to 6. Okay. Now let's say that I wanted to find side B. I have two ways of doing it, right? I can actually use the cosine or I can use the tangent. And it really doesn't make any difference which one you use. Just make sure you use something that you have enough information for. So let's just go with cosine. So let's say cosine of 30 degrees should be equal to the adjacent side, which is B, over the hypotenuse, which again we know is 12. All right? Now, the sine of 30 is not the same as the cosine of 30. You have to go back to your calculator and press in 30. Again, it just depends on your calculator, right? But I'll put in 30, and then I'll put cosine. Now, cosine is 0.866. You usually just go out three decimal places. So I will put down cosine of 30 is 0.866. It's equal to B over 12. Multiply both sides by 12. And you get... 10.392 is equal to B. I'm just going to round that down to 10.4 is equal to B. Now, let me just put that in there. 10.4. Now I have something that I can actually check, right? I know that for a right triangle, I could use the Pythagorean theorem, couldn't I? And I could just say that a squared plus b squared should be equal to c squared. And I have these values now. Let's just see if the trigonometric functions worked. So I'm going to say a squared is 6 squared. B squared is 10.4 approximately, right? Let me put that in parentheses. Same thing with this one. And the C squared was 12. All right, squared. Well, I know that this is 36. I know that 10.4 times uh, squared, rather, is 108. 
approximately 0.1, and I know that 12 squared is 144. Is 36 plus 108 144? Yes, it is. So what I have done here is I have actually just confirmed that my trigonometric functions worked, my ratios worked, and I confirmed it by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and again, you could also use tangent to find B. I could have used, you know, the tangent of 30 was the opposite over the, high, over the adjacent, right? And I would have gotten a different ratio, but it would have actually ended up working. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you.